Hey there, Adam Enfroy here. In today's video, we're gonna cover exactly how to rank on Google in the 2020s and what I did to generate over 450,000 sessions last month. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what it takes to rank on Google from both a content, link building, and business standpoint, and why it's so lucrative and important to do so. But before we get started, I wanna invite you to watch my free masterclass on how to build a profitable blogging business, even if you're brand new or have tried and failed before. So this masterclass shows you my exact step-by-step -step system to grow a massively profitable blog and how you can do it in months, not years gives you the exact content, link building, and affiliate marketing strategies that I use to make over $100,000 a month from my blog. And it shows you how to make real passive income in the 2020s and why most blogging advice is wrong. So all you have to do is click the link in the description and you'll get access to this free blogging masterclass. So before we get started with this video, click the link below and register for free now. Now let's get into the topic for today. Before we get started, we have to think about why do we want to rank on Google in the first place? Well, Google is the largest search engine and it's one of the largest platforms online. People like to think about TikTok or YouTube or all these other avenues, but when you think about Google and the search engine that it is, it is bigger than Facebook, Instagram, and Netflix combined. There are over 5.5 billion searches every single day on Google, and that number is only increasing as more and more people get online and use it. I mean, think about all the purchases that are made on Amazon and all the people searching Google for product reviews, for information. Sometimes you just think, I need to know that thing, just Google it. There is really a lot of power in ranking on Google and a lot of money to be made for ranking for specific keywords. I mean, think about it. Somebody thinks of something in their brain they type it into Google because they want information and you can be the person that provides that information and potentially makes money. So it's a form of digital real estate that actually can be more valuable than physical real estate in some instances. So you're really monetizing the collective consciousness of people when they think thoughts and you are the one providing that information. So ranking on Google, it's getting tougher, but there's ways to do it that are new and updated using AI tools, using software, using structure, using formatting, using the correct way to rank on Google in the 2020s. So let's get into it. First way to rank on Google is to think about what Google is and how it works. So Google is technically a search engine that is organizing the world's information in one place. And how does it do that? Well, in layman terms, it uses search engine spiders that basically go from article to article, link to link, website to website, and they scan the content on each individual page to understand both the relationships between websites and also the content on the page itself. So those are the two main ranking factors that we want to really dive into. Yes, there's you know page speed and uh, all these other Google ranking factors, hundreds of them that people come up with, but the main two to focus on are the content on the page, what Google actually reads, and the interrelated nature of the links pointing to that page. So that's what we're gonna mainly focus on because they're the most important thing, whether you're a small business, a blogger, or any type of website. So first, we have to think about the content on the page itself. So Google scans the page and reads it. So what do you do? How do you rank? Well, first, you need to know that one article or one page needs to rank for one specific target keyword. We can't write about tons of different things in one page. That would just confuse search engines. So for example, I have this, uh, I Googled best SEO tools. This is a really competitive keyword. It's one that I rank for, you know, between Tech Radar here and Backlinko. And I have my article here, 23 best SEO tools of 2021. So why is it ranking? How is it here? Let's analyze that. First of all, the content on the page matches that keyword. So I did keyword research and I wanted to rank for best SEO tools. So what I did is I put it in the URL of the article, adamenfroy.com slash best SEO tools. I put it in the title right here. There's a featured image. Um, you put it in the intro, you put it throughout the content, and you put it in the H2 headings. So you put it in headings throughout the article. You say, what are SEO tools? There's specific places that you place this content in order to rank on Google. I couldn't just have it all be random paragraph text and it says SEO tools, SEO tools here. People often ask me that, where do I put this keyword? How many times do I use it? Where do I put it? There's a clear format for ranking on Google. 
And that includes basically including the main target keyword in the URL, in the title, throughout the content itself, and in the main H2 headings. So H2 headings are you know, the second most important thing next to the title of the article itself. And you wanna ask a question in these headings and then give the answers as H3s. So you can also use like the meta description and put it in there. Ultimately, you know, that's it for the structure. You wanna have an intro, you wanna have the title, the H2s and all that so that Google can read and understand it. Having an H2 as a question and H3s as the answers helps Google kind of scan that page, understand the relationship, maybe pull it into featured snippets more. But you need to have the content correct on the page. So one thing I wanna show you here is a tool that can help you do that. So what keywords do we use? How do we rank? Well, one thing is on the page itself. And another is, you know, what are all of the possible keywords? So let's look at an example here of uh, a different variation. So we're not going to do SEO tools, but we'll use best remote desktop software. So this is another one I wrote and I put it into this tool called Surfer SEO. Basically what it does is it tells you literally based on this target keyword, what other semantically related keywords to use and where to put them. So as you can see here, best remote desktop software is up top and we have all these different variations of it. So it says we need to use best remote desktop software between five and 12 times. We need to use remote desktop services between two and four times. We need to use random things that you know you can add in and get a score. So this is using AI. It's scanning all the ranking articles and maybe the top 30 or top 50, seeing what types of words are included in those posts that are being rewarded by Google. And then it is telling you how many times to use those specific keywords. So ranking on Google is less about writing posts and more about placing the correct keywords in the right place to make Google think that you have the best article based on having all of this semantically related information based on machine learning. So the content on the page itself can be optimized with these SEO tools to give you all these different keyword variations and a score that tells you this is the content that is optimized for Google. So what you need is the keywords in the right places, title, URL, in the headings, then you can use a tool like Surfer to tell you all the extra variations. So for example, it's just very simple, like semantic keywords are simple. If you wrote an article about the best California beaches, it wouldn't just be like best beaches, best California beaches, best Malibu, whatever it is. You'd also need words like semantically related words like maybe sand, ocean, waves, things that show Google and search engines that you have the most in-depth comprehensive article, you're covering all your bases. So first, that's the content on the page itself. What is actually on the page that Google is reading? And having all these variations and different strings really helps you rank on Google from a content standpoint. The second one, so first is content, what's on the page? The second one is links. So links pointing to the article. Links are like a sign of trust in Google's eyes and they tell Google, hey, there's all these external websites linking to this article as a source of information, it must be good. If you had no links pointing to your article and you're just sitting out here on an island, Google doesn't think you're that authoritative. But if you have high quality links from like the New York Times, HubSpot, CNET, CNN, all these different sites pointing to you, that tells Google, hey, that's a sign of trust, that's authority page value is being passed from one website to your article and that's a sign of authority. So first is content, what's actually on the page. Second is the relationship pointing to the page to show you as a sign of trust. Think about it like a research paper. The most cited is the most popular. So citing a research paper is like, focus on this article, this is a good one. And there's lots and tons of link building strategies that I teach in my blogging masterclass, which you can see in the link below, exactly how to write and optimize this content, do all the link building to these posts to get it to rank, because it's a whole system. So let me quickly, before we get into the final um, stuff here, we'll, we'll cover backlinks specifically and how to look at them. So I'm looking at a tool like Hrefs, which is a great SEO tool that helps you track keywords, analyze your website, do all kinds of link building stuff. And what I did is I looked at my best SEO article 
in Ahrefs. And what I see is it shows that it gets about 1,500 visitors a month. And it's the top keyword is best SEO tools. It actually ranks number one for that in Germany, of all places, which is interesting. But we can see that. We can also see, if I click this down arrow, it can show you know, other referring domains and how many backlinks are pointing to this article. So when I go to the backlinks pointing to this article, so this is all the backlinks pointing to my SEO tools article. And we can see that like, okay, there's some good links to it. Co-schedule, Zero, Flippa, Tapfiliate, Wave.video, lots of good, you know, high domain rating websites pointing to this article. And we can see based on the best SEO tools in the Keyword Explorer as well, that when we look at the top 10 results here, and it shows me at number six, um, we see that my domain rating on my site is 78. The URL rating is really the most important thing to ranking on Google from a link perspective. The URL rating says this is the authority of this individual page based on the links pointing to that page. So you'll see that I have a lower URL rating than most of these other articles on this first page of Google. That means I'm beating them in some way from a content standpoint. And it shows all the backlinks pointing to this. But this number, this URL rating, is vitally important to ranking on Google because basically you have control over the content on the page and then there's the links pointing to that content. And the links pointing to that content dictate that URL rating. And getting that, you know, you don't have to beat every single, you know, uh, other website from a link standpoint. You can see that I'm still ranking even though my URL rating is lower than others. But you need to be in the ballpark. So we cover all these link building strategies that you can do to actively get links in some of my other videos and in my free masterclass. So those are the two main things, the content on the page and the links themselves. And you'll see right here in Ahrefs, this is the position history of all of these articles. So what, how Google works is it has a specific search query, best SEO tools. It's something that's been around for a long time, SEO tools. And what it does is it uses a lot of data. These search engines use data and they use what I call the data collection phase and then the more established phase. So what happens is it has these top 10 results for best SEO tools and it knows how many clicks all these are getting. And it knows kind of how people are interacting with that content, what's the time on page. The ultimate goal, the ultimate search ranking you know, signal and the best way to rank on Google is ending the search journey. Ending the search journey is you provide the information that the user wants and they don't go back to Google. So for example, if somebody searches best SEO tools, they click on my article, they go to my website, and then they don't go back to Google, they don't try another article, that means that my post ended the search journey. That's the most important thing. And that truly is providing the best information. So Google can tell if they go back and then they click another article and that one ends the search journey. So, and they also know like time on page and these specific things. So the more that people interact with your content, the more they engage with it, the longer they stay, the more that you end the search journey, those are the rankings that go up. So it's a mixture of great content on the page that matches the search intent behind what somebody wants to see with the keywords in the right places using semantic tools and getting links pointing as a sign of trust. So all of these work together to get Google rankings for you. Now it's ultimately about ending the search journey. And that is basically how to rank on Google in the 2020s. You know, there's authority and backlinks as a sign of trust, the content on the page, and using, you know, ending the search journey based on data. You know, a new keyword comes up, it gets 10,000 clicks. How do they interact with your blog post versus others? Are, they, are you ending the search journey or are you not? And that's something that can't really be faked. You have to be providing the best information based on search intent and really providing value to your readers. So Google is getting smarter. You know, it's the 2020s. Ranking is more difficult. Big brands are entering the picture and ranking on Google, but you can use AI tools. You can do link building, you can get smarter and you can still compete. I'm an individual blogger, an individual person that created a seven figure blog in just under two, you know, two years. So it's still possible. It's not too late. 
but to rank on Google, focus on content and link building. So I hope that video was helpful. Um, before we wrap up, I want to extend my final invitation to join my free blogging masterclass. You'll get access to all of my exact content, link building, and affiliate marketing strategies that I use. Uh, you'll get access to showing how to make real passive income in the 2020s and my exact system and framework that I use to make over $100,000 a month from my blog. So click the link in the description below. You know, a lot of, we've had thousands of students go through this free masterclass, lots of aha moments. So I hope you enjoy it. Click the link below and join for free and I will see you in the next video.